boys going on here? Feeding line, name of the tune. 14 minutes past eight here on the Radio MO Breakfast. Time for State of It. No, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that let's have a, a, a business case done. Let's have everybody put their bid on the table. And then we take a look at it. And then we go to each of them and say how we can, how, how we can improve it and, and do whatever we want to do with it. But, but with Sky City... To bid. It was only Sky City that put $350 million up. Yeah, but what, hap what happened was is the business case was, was being done by the Ministry of Economic Development. John Key stopped it when he heard that Sky City had a bid on the table, met with Sky City, met with a, talk, and talked to them about upping their pokies through changing the Gambling Act, changing our law. That there the is uh, David Shearer on The Nation there talking to um, Duncan Garner, obviously, about the uh, Sky City situation with the uh, convention centre there. State of it with Selwyn Manning. Uh, thanks very much to livenews.co.nz. Welcome to the show, Selwyn. Yeah, thank you, Glenn. And today we are talking about David Shearer and his performance as Labour leader so far and uh, sort of the musical cheers and shuffling that's going on in the background there of his support crew. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, what, what has come to light this week is uh, what we've been hearing for some weeks now behind the scenes, and that is David Shearer's team, their stra his strategists, um, those that are supposed to be most loyal to him. Um, there's a divided uh, ditch between uh, one faction and another faction, basically, where they see uh, the ne how necessary it is for David Shearer um, to place himself either as an attack dog, uh, focusing on the House, obviously on the Prime Minister, or out there in the provinces, out there in the cities, connecting New Zealand, bringing uh, policy and solutions um, um, to the table when uh, things go awry for the government. Mm. Sam, where does, that, where does that dividing line happen? I mean, what kind of staff does he even have there? I mean, for people who don't know mm. sort of what happens behind the scenes, how does this work? Okay, well, the, from one thing, you know, what, what's been turning into a negative at the moment is actually quite a positive for, for a political process and a transition. What I'm talking about there is um, the Deputy Leader Grant Robertson has a very close ally that has moved into David Shearer's office. And in my view, that, that's a healthy thing. Um, that remember that the Labour Party under David Shearer has to reconnect and reconnection is the big task that David Shearer has. We know from his past record, Glenn, uh, that he has been a team builder and that's what he brought to the leadership right from the start. A fresh face from outside politics, um, is able to connect with people, is strong on human rights, has a view for New Zealand as an independent state again, instead of being some sort of proxy state of uh, the United States or the Western Alliance, um, and all those kind of things. Um, now, there's another faction that has led really, no, when I say factions, I mean it's a dif difference of opinion in this sense, mm. um, led by Fran Mould, who's the former, um, listeners might remember Fran Mould as the deputy editor of Television New Zealand for a time. Prior to that, she was with the New Zealand Herald. Her, most of her experience in a professional sense as a communicator has been within the parliamentary press gallery um, reporting politics, particularly at that senior level. Now, um, she was... Uh, taken in by Phil Goff as, a pre as his chief press secretary and that was seen as a coup in a sense as Fran Mould is a very smart person uh, but what we've seen here in the recent weeks is Fran Mould's view is, is that David Shearer should be there fronting the big issues. Now this goes back to you know, the beginning of the year really where Grant Robertson and others on the front bench were able to assert themselves really and to take possession of issues uh, while the leader was quite comfortable with that, David Shearer would be out there as leader in the provinces meeting people on the so-called tour that he was doing you know, around the country. Yeah. She, she obviously disagreed with that, or to the degree where she said, OK, that's enough, we need him in there controlling you know, the, the Labour strategy, pr providing the leadership and really developing those, not trying to put words in Fran's mouth here, but developing those... those um, political instincts where he can actually grab John Key and actually squeeze, you know, some sense out of him mm. um, and b b look to be um, seen to be doing. Now, it seems that that friend mould argument ha has caused quite a, a disconcerting kind of environment within David Shearer's office, that you've seen his chief of staff, um, Stuart Nash, uh, resign, and he's going back to Napier. Now, he says that uh, he always said right from the start, he's only been in the office about three, four months now, um, in, that, in that role. It's, it's supposed to be the boss, you know, he's supposed to be the boss of these things. Now he's gone, basically, and what, who has been replaced is 
um, is, is um, uh, uh, th this, this person here um, of um, uh, Grant Robertson's uh, kind of group, if you like. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th and that's where it really, the, the whole crux of it, Glenn, um, kind of sits. Okay, so tell us about. I mean, so the, so that chief of staff role is that is that the spin doctor role that we hear so often about? Uh, no, it's re it's a mix of both. I'm a, very much in charge of marshalling the team. So you're right there at the front of everything. The the chief of staff is like Heather Simpson was in the Helen Clark kind of. Uh, uh, camp. You know, remember, um, people used to say it was how, um, H2 was was Heather Simpson. You know, yeah. um, she was so powerful within the uh, the beehive apparatus and the party itself. Now, um, that, that's what the chief of staff is like. You had Richard Long there with Brash at the same time. So yeah. what they do is that they're, they're in charge of managing the whole team of of you know identifying. Uh, where to put the pressure on. Um, obviously, right there with a strategic kind of. Uh, a, a strike team, if you like, and, and trying to actually manage um, who's going to do what in that, in that well, top party who, area. Who, They're in charge of the running of the office of the opposition. Who um, advises uh, Shearer on what to do in a particular situation? Let's say they're going into an interview situation or a stand-up or something. Who's who's the person in his ear saying, "I think you should take take this angle"? Or what, who's that? Well, it's usually not just one person. It's usually okay. um, you would have someone like the chief of staff, who was Stuart Nash. You would also have Fran Mole as the chief press secretary, saying, you know, from her her kind of uh, area, um, you know, what what lines are going to get the most effect? Um, how sympathetic the press gallery journalists are to particular arguments. Mm. Uh, you know, all that media management kind of stuff. Um, this is where the momentum is going. Um, you need to advance that, or this this line here has exhausted its effect. Um, so this one here is the one where you take off from, um, even to the point of, okay, it's time to put in new information to get ahead of the news cycle again. Yeah. Um, that type of thing. That would be Fran Mould's area. Now, clearly, you know, Labour is in a conundrum in a sense. They've got a populist prime minister as their as their opponent, um, who who very much is seen as the National Party. You know, if, uh, if people were aware of examining perhaps the talents of those right through the National Caucus, they might rub and scratch their head and think, oh, it's not as good as what we thought they were. Um, that's often the case in all parties when they're in government, of course. Um, but I guess what I'm kind of um, leading to here is, is and there is a school of thought that the Labour Party's best form of attack on National while National is in government under John Key, is not to go head to head like Phil Goff tried to do. Um, that that didn't work in a sense, mm. but to demonstrate a cabinet in waiting, where you've got all of your front bench absolutely demonstrating expertise over their political portfolio mm. that they are spokesperson for, and leading. Uh, the, you know the news on each of those portfolios, so that national is drawn into a situation where the prime minister can't be answering for every portfolio, and it draws some of those other ministers out of their comfort zone, hiding behind John Key's smile. Mm. Now, if if David Shearer is drawn into that style that they used under Phil Goff, he's not going to win. He's not going to be effective. You know, Phil Goff knew what he was doing, and he could. Others, he's broken, breaking away from process to try and advance deals 
part in the business community that really the public does not seem to be happy with or instead with. So, you know, there's a lot there that would expect the popularity of that particular party in the government to cause it to drop, mm. um, cause the popularity to drop, but, it, but it's not in large degrees. And I think Labour is starting to panic. If they stand back and look, they've got time, really, you know, up their sleeves. David Shearer's biggest job is connect with the public, connect with the membership, develop new policies or solution-based policies to the problems that have been caused by the National Party, arguably, um, and then, then, you know, work toward whether or not, by February, that there is a, a need for the new natural leader, who is obviously Grant Robertson, to come in place. Mm. If, if they, you know, they might be able to have their cake and eat it too. They might be able to do a role now, it's nice and early in the term, put Grant Robertson in, he's going to be a winner. You know, you can see it all over this guy. He, he's a brilliant politician and he's a, he's a decent kind of guy. The public will probably warm to him in that way. Um, and he's certainly got the smarts to deal with the media, perhaps in a way that David Shearer struggled. But at the same time, they've got time. You know, there's no panic here. They can do it without this uh, kind of repeat of nasty factional fighting, which is where the right-wing blogs, you know, are just milking this. And I've got to say, you know, what um, Ken Slater is doing um, is just brilliant politics and drawing this out. Um, and, and also, you know, Kiwi blog David Barra just massaging the weaknesses of Labour here. And really, you know, some of the left-wing blogs that are supposed to be uh, in the Labour camp, they're falling straight into the trap. And I know Cam would be laughing very much over his cup of tea when he, when he sees this appear. Indeed. All right, so you can find this as a video once more up at livenews.co.nz. Um, also, uh, chat with Salwan on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Salwan underscore Manning.